Besides having your tools in a good place, having a few good tools that you really, really like and that are really dependable is important. And so is the care of them. Those are some of my favorite tools for out in the garden here. Wow, spring is almost upon us. It's early March and yet I've still got nearly eight foot of snow piled up here. We've got two foot of snow on the ground and yet it's time to be thinking about gardening. And uh, I have not been in the garden for over four months and I really need to get going. And so today I'm gonna take you guys with me, first time in the garden in four months, and we're gonna do a tool survey, and I'm gonna show you some of my favorite tools, why they're my favorites, and maybe a few ways to get a hold of some good tools, because as we're getting ready to go into garden se season, having really, really good tools that you love to work with and that aren't gonna break down on you is really important. Let's head to the garden shed. You can see just how much snow we have, and the way it's looking, we're gonna have to forge through the snow. We're gonna take the long way around, see how the greenhouse is doing, and see if we can make our way over to the garden shed and ultimately to the tools and, the, and some of the other starting pots that I need. Immediately, I am remembering that I didn't get something on my spring project list because you can see this greenhouse, this has been here since we bought the place four years ago and it needs to be redone. So just barely getting out here and I've already got another major task. I see I need to add to my spring list, but let's see if we can get in here. Woo. Okay, the greenhouse is gonna be a bigger project than I thought this year. We've got a little work to do so that we can get our spring greens going but that's not the task for today, so we'll keep moving along. I think we should have brought the snowshoes. You guys know what's supposed to be right here. If you followed us for a while and you know our garden setup, there is something major missing right here. And that's the other bean tunnel. It's gone. It is flattened under the snow. And this was the one that I did the DIY hoop house with and put the plastic over. And I'll tell you, I did an experiment. I wanted to know how much weight it could take. I didn't want it to fail, but I was sure it could at least take a few inches of snow. When winter started kicking in, I was watching and literally three inches of snow collapsed it. And I think even some of you said that, but said that it was gonna do that. But I wanted to know, I'm usually pretty good at engineering stuff. And I did not think that three or four inches would take that thing down. That's a major bummer. We haven't even gotten to the garden shed yet and uh, the projects are really stacking up. We can actually get into the garden shed. All right, well, this is gonna need a little cleanup. It's just as we left it in fall. And this is in pretty good shape. The roof held up well over a heavy snow. So let's go check out the tools because that's really the subject at hand today. This is where I keep all of my garden tools and they're here for a reason. They've got a little protection from the roof line of the building and yet they're very, very accessible because usually I'm coming through that gate. And so if I'm coming into the garden to work, they're right here where I need them. These tools are dedicated for the garden. They're not allowed to go anywhere else. Eventually, maybe we'll get them hanging up. That would be a really good step, but that's been a minor project we haven't gotten to yet. Besides having your tools in a good place, having a few good tools that you really, really like and that are really dependable is important. And so is the care of them. And one of the first things I want you to notice is that most of my tools here are wood handled. I always look for wood handled tools. They just feel better in the hand. Usually they're a bit older. I'm gonna show you some new tools that are really well made here in a little bit. One of the first things right here, just going in line is a good leaf rake, a good light rake. And you know what? This thing looks funky. I got this for a couple dollars at a old antique store, but this is one of my favorite tools out here. Other than the handle is a little short, this is really, really good for cleaning up in the garden, even sometimes smaller bed prep. 
and I love it that it's metal. This thing has just held up for years and years and years, and it's light, it's easy to use. This one needs a little rehab, and I'm, I'm gonna show you how to do that in a little bit, how to just quickly take your wood handle tools and recondition them, because this thing, this will last me the rest of my life if I take care of it. Here's another style leaf rake, a little bigger, a little wider, like this one too, same thing. You know, when you go in the stores these days, most of the time they're plastic and I can't stand that. But I found this one and I only paid, I think, $5 for it. Same thing, this handle's not too bad, but it's it's about time to give it some reconditioning. Just working down the line, another must have is string line. For, for my gardens, we have long rows and if you're working on a production level, and you're gardening any in any kind of long row matter, it's great to have just some rebar with some good string line on it so that you can, you know, you can string out your beds, whether it's your planting rows or just reshaping your beds. We've got to do that all every so many years. And so having a couple of these is really, really good. Next is a good hard rake. It's a couple different hard rakes. This is just your general hard rake for a little heavier work. I really like this one. I want to show you the difference in handle length. Big, big difference in handle length. This is much more comfortable to use. It's easy to reach out and it's, it's getting harder a lot of times to find long handled tools, but it is so much easier on your body to have a good long handled tool. So one of my go-tos is antique stores, sometimes thrift stores, but really some of the old antique stores. We happen to have one up here that's got like really like great expensive antiques, but it also has tons of old tools that people think are not worthwhile and we often pick them up for just a few bucks. So definitely use this guy sometimes for clearing things out of the way. If I got to dig a spot deep for the trees, um, couldn't find one of these in a wood handled. But this guy's useful, but not, not one of my main tools. For weeding, I like a hula hoe and that is my favorite way to weed except for that I have a new tool I'm going to show you here in just a second. Hula hoe, I love, I just love how it works through the soil for doing light weeding. I'd love one with a longer handle. I'm still looking for that, that short. And I've got a brand new tool though that might just replace the hula hoe. And honestly, I don't even know what this is called. My friend over, Will, over at Homestead Iron sent this to us to try out and it's gonna work very similar to the hula hoe in that it can just go along the surface and it's not gonna disturb the soil a whole lot and it's gonna take out those small weeds. And this has that long handle that I'm talking about that is so easy to use. And you're probably just gonna hear me say this over and over in this video. Look for tools with long handles. It is so much easier on your body so that you can work upright and you're not working like this all the time. That, that's what tears your back up in the garden. I'm gonna give this a try this year instead of the hula hoe and see how it works. If I do need a regular hoe, this is my favorite right here. I don't know how old this guy is. This is some old, old iron. It's very light, it's very narrow, it's very easy to get into some spaces. And so if I've gotta do a little heavier work past like a hula hoe or that diamond head, this is another great tool. It's one you want in your arsenal. I wouldn't mind if it was even a foot longer. Good sledgehammer. This one's maybe a little bit heavy duty, but you're gonna need it for the rebar and some other things. And of course, we want a couple of shovels. I wanna talk about shovels for a second because people tend to think that bigger is better with a shovel. The more you can get in one bite, one shovel full, the better. And that is a lot harder on your body. This is a round nose shovel, much, much preferable in the garden. And if you can see, this has just got a small spoon or a small body to it. And that's all you need in the garden. And really, even if I'm doing heavy work, if I'm shoveling dirt or gravel, you know, I had an old, old guy tell me when I was younger that I was breaking my back trying to, trying to be tough and use the biggest, heaviest shovel. And to find a smaller shovel, lighter work, yes, it's more strokes, but it's much easier on your body. Really, really indispensable. And again, you're probably gonna have to go looking for one of these. Getting on to a couple of my most valuable tools, we're gonna have to break this one out of the snow a little. This is a garden bed prep rake. And this has become one of my most coveted favorite tools that has saved me a lot of work. And that is because I work with the 30 inch system, more of a market gardening system. And more and more you're finding tools to work with that system. And so this one rake, this bed prep rake is set to work with you know, that width. It's a little narrower than 30, but I don't have to go back over twice. I can pretty much hit the bed with this. You can see it's got a nice long handle. You can shape the angle of this to suit your height. 
in the work that you're doing. And so this is just a fantastic tool that some of the market gardeners created, I think. They're a little hard to find and, and don't confuse this with a landscape rake that looks similar. It's a similar width but they're generally not adjustable. They have a different tying set on them. The one place I know to get this is from Johnny Seeds. They've got some great tools. This is a fantastic rake if you're working with two, you know, 24 inch to 30 inch beds, which I highly recommend if you've seen some of my other videos as far as garden layouts. And really good, really lightweight. Again, a nice wood handle. This one is still in very good shape. Might not hurt to put a little bit of oil on it this year, but this is doing really, really well. This rake really does multi-duty in prepping the garden beds, but also you can very easily create your rows for planting seeds in. And this is just some packs, and Johnny's will sell this as well, but you can, these are made to go right over the tines, and whatever spacing you wanna do. So if you wanna do about six inch spacing, you can put these on. It is very easy in one pass without string lines, without a hoe or a spade or anything like that to just come down your garden row and bring this along. You've got your furrows for your seeds all ready to go in one pass. No string lines, no anything. So now when I do carrots, four to six rows, I can get the bed already, rake it out with this garden prep, put the, put the packs on there and make my seed rows real quick, real easy. Really love that system and that has created a lot of efficiencies for me out in the garden. A couple of very important tools, and that is the broad fork. There is a time for a tiller, there's a time for using machinery to get things prepped, but for overall maintenance in the garden, I don't wanna be turning the soil up every year, and this broad fork has really become my friend. And this is made by Meadow Creature, and this thing is heavy duty. This one's 14 inches deep. I've actually got a 16 inch one on the way because it's so important to loosen up the soil and improve that soil tilt down deep, deeper than any tiller is gonna go anyways. And that tiller is gonna create, especially in clay soils, a pan where those tines rub against the soil over and over. And so while you're loosening the top six to eight inches, maybe 10, you're also creating a pan on the bottom that makes it harder for the water to penetrate into, makes it harder for the roots to penetrate into. And so this broad fork is really, I found it's not much work, that more work than tilling. You still gotta wrestle that machine around and get it up and down the path and hold on to it as it's pulling you forward. And this is made to just stand on. I've got some other videos that uh, I show you doing that and loosen that soil without turning it all the way up and over. Sometimes you've gotta work your way down. And so I started with this one with a shorter tine here. You can get one of these at Johnny's. This is a pretty good tool. You can see though, those tines have bent and, and our soil isn't even that bad. If you've got some compact soil and you're wanting to break it up without machinery, this broad fork is a good way to go. It's a good starter, but it's, it's not gonna get you a lot deeper than a tilling machine is. So I quickly found I wanted to get down deeper and so I went to this metal creature. It easily got down in there. And then this year, I'm gonna work some of my beds with the 16 inch, 16 inch one, and that's really helping loosen the soil up down deep. So indispensable, really encourage you guys to try out a broad fork. A few other small hand tools that are indispensable. Of course, a good spade. And I don't know about you guys, but how many spades have you broken over the years just getting down in there and working and finding that the handles are cheap and just about no matter which one I have found, most of them, they rarely make it through a season. Yeah, and this is what I love. Again, you hear me talking a lot about Homestead Iron and these tools are just solid. So this is just a really, really cool spade. Indispensable, this guy usually lives in my side pocket during the season and this thing is never gonna break. Uh, I'm gonna be handing this down to whoever the next generation of gardener is. So really, really love that tool. Gotta have it on hand. Also need a good set of uh, pruners, of small pruners. I like the open L, the wood handled ones. I just gravitate toward wood. The open L's have worked great, but there's plenty of other good ones out there. And while this isn't quite for the vegetable garden, we also have a lot of perennial gardens. Hopefully you do as well. You're developing fruit trees and bushes. And so you need a good folding saw that's compact. Open all here makes another, another good one that's just very comfortable in the hand, very sharp, very, very good tool. So these are a couple of my go-tos 
that are never usually very far away or out of reach. Some good jute twine, lots of jute twine. We want to stay away from the plastic, poly, whatever, wherever we can. We're usually going to have several rolls of the twine for tying things up. Flagging is indispensable. These are getting pretty beat up, but you know what? They were here when we got here, along with some we had, but just some identifiers. It would be good to even have, you know, uh, other colors, but these things are just really, really handy. And it's good to have them on hand before you get started, along with, you know, your markers. Really, really like these ones. My son made these uh, for a Christmas present for Carolyn. Whatever they are, I mean, we try to do wood ones and paint and some permanent markers, but really to ha handy to have these and try to have them ready uh, before you get to planting. As I was talking how much I love wood rakes, they last forever if you take care of them. And this one is in the worst shape. It's starting to give me little splinters. And uh, so I definitely want to tune this up a little bit. And it's really, really easy. All we need to do is take a little bit of sandpaper. I've got a piece of sandpaper here from a rotary sander. This is about 120 grit. I'm gonna fold that over so the splinters don't come through the holes. And we just want to smooth it off. We don't want to take off any more than we have to because I let this one go and ideally I let this go too long, right? Got busy and let it get out of hand instead of keeping it oiled like some of the other ones. Which is a shame because this is, I don't know why, this is like my favorite tool in the whole garden. I love this rake. There's, it, it, it talks to me for some reason. I don't know if it's the thinness of the handle or the lightweightness of it. It amounts to a tool that is a joy to use and it's just such a blessing when you find tools like that. So we don't, we don't want to let them get this degraded. We really want to take care of it. The, the sandpaper is important. Don't go too rough. 80 grit's really too rough. You're not going to like the finish on it. If you go much lower than 100, it's going to take you a long time to sand, uh, unless you're really doing a light maintenance. So I like 100 to 120 grit on the sandpaper. This really does a good job. Let's see, did we get the, we did pretty good. I'm gonna do this just a little more because I let this one go too far. So we've got this nicely sanded and now we want to protect the wood a little bit. I like to use what I have and we've got a lot of lard on hand, warmed it up and we're just gonna rub this in and we can put it on really heavy, let it soak into the wood and we're just gonna wipe it off. And it'll still be a little tacky for a bit, but you just let it sit and it'll all settle in. Now, if you don't have lard, tallow works, any kind of animal fat, and that's my go-to because we have that on hand, but if you don't have animal fat on hand, something like a mineral oil works great as well to recondition the wood. And look at that, that is just beautiful. And I guess the thing I love about the wood is just I enjoy the grain. And I think it's a better resource to use. It's a renewable resource. So there you go. That is how you rehab a wood handled tool. So those are some of my favorite tools for out in the garden here. Be sure to go and check out this video on my whole garden system and how I set these rows up. And then you'll see how some of these tools fit in. We'll see you soon.